Uh, fellow Gambians, I just uh, had to come on uh, live real quick. Uh, today, we are confronted again with another challenge. Uh, there is absolutely no doubt that uh, uh, it would have been uh, really surreal if Jame had just given up power peacefully. What had happened today from Jame, though surprising, must not be unexpected from a tyrant who knows that his time is up. What is important is what are we going to do about the situation. Jame's uh, claims are not only ridiculous, uh, but they are uh, just out of this world dumb in every uh, shape or form. Uh, first of all, Jame cannot claim that the opposition rigged the elections. The results that he is rejecting now were the same results that he accepted. And I just want to draw people to something. If you listen to Jame's concession speech, he had mentioned the actual numbers. In fact, the difference, he mentioned 18,000, meaning their calculation was right. Uh, but Jamie's problem here is not that he lost the elections. His problem is that he is about to be out of power, which he loves so very much. Now, there are two things that must happen. The opposition on the ground must be steadfast and reject any attempt by Jamie to usurp the will of the Gambian people. That must be rejected forcefully and fearlessly. Two, the international community has a responsibility now to support the will of the Gambian people, and that is Barrow, who was elected by the Gambian people in an election that Barrow did not observe, in an election that Barrow did not oversee, in an election where the chairman, the whole council, of the IEC were appointed by Yaya Jame without any consultation with the opposition. So the international community cannot sit now and leave this to us. Because what the Gambian people have done is what is expected from them. That is to conduct themselves democratically, vote in a democratic election, and choose their government. We did all that. Every time attempt is made by Gambians to go outside of the law to claim our country, we hear condemnation from the international community. Our comrades were killed in the Gambia. Some of them are in jails here in the United States precisely because the United States believed that what they did was illegal and was not the way to go. Now, America, the Gambians have done what you've asked us always to do, to go before the people, present a candidate, and be voted into office. That was done, and you congratulated us. The whole world congratulated us. Now, it is important that you make so that the will of the Gambian people is not usurped. I just want to also appeal to the Gambians, especially those in the diaspora. We have to be level-headed. Some of us have already started the work of contacting our partners around the world who are all now aware of the situation so that we will act accordingly to end so that the will of the Gambian people will not be overthrown by Yaya Jame again. He came in 1994, overthrew a democratically elected government. In 1996, he rigged the elections, thus usurping the will of the Gambian people. He did that in, 19, in 2001 again. 2006, 2011, and now, the Gambian people decided to vote overwhelmingly for Adam Abaro and the opposition.
to be in power. So let's continue to engage in order. There's no need to just be angry on social media. Let's channel that anger to where it would benefit us by making so that we'll get our country back. Yaya Jame has no respect for the Gambian people. He doesn't care about the Gambian people. Because Yaya is ready to plunge our nation into bloodbath. But Yaya also must understand that the only things the Gambians have to lose are our chains. Chains of tyranny. Chains of dictatorship. Chains of impunity. Harassment. Torture. The killings. The Gambians have had enough of your dictatorship. Yeah, Jame, this is why they voted you out. But you are too stupid to understand your stupidity. But Gambians are tired of you. And to the Gambians on the ground, I'm not asking anybody to do anything foolish. But I want all Gambians to understand that you must not allow your rights to be abrogated. We all see one week of freedom, virtual freedom, what it was like in that country. Imagine a lifetime of freedom. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time to lose hope. This is not the time to despair. This is the time for all Gambians, irrespective of political affiliation, to join hands to defend our country from a callous regime that is determined to plunge it into chaos. But Yaya Jami must fail, and he must fail miserably. And his failure can only come if we are a united people against a despotic, wicked man and his psychophants who are following him all over the place. The international community will only come to our aid if they know that we are determined and unified. We have to close ranks and work hard to liberate our country and our people. 22 years is too damn long to deal and continue to deal with Jame's foolishness. Jame has now lost every opportunity of being treated like a human being. I'm not talking about a former president, a human being. So this is why we must be steadfast. And to the military, you have your guns, you've seen your new promotions, but remember that you must not kill for Yahya Jame. Because if you do, he may end up killing you like he did the Ilo Jalos, Jalos and others. So I urge you to stand with the gallant people of the Gambia, the peaceful Gambians who went to those poles, lined in the sun under very, very serious conditions to exercise their rights to enfranchisement by voting in a government of their choice. So all Gambians who are patriotic must defend the choice of the majority of Gambians who voted in those elections. So my fellow Gambians, I just don't want us to despair and act like the world is over. It's not. Because what this could also mean now is that Yahya Jame would now be treated like the criminal that he is and not a dignified human being. He has no dignity in him, he has no integrity, and he has zero respect for the Gambian people.
We will not allow him to plunge our nation into bloodbath, but we will not also allow him to usurp the overwhelming view of the Gambian people who decided that they wanted change. So my question to everybody is, what are you going to do to ensure that the will of the Gambian people is respected, protected, and becomes the order of the day come January when Paro should be inaugurated as the third president of the Republic of the Gambia. We can sit here and pontificate as to what the opposition was supposed to do. Control the narrative, control the army, go to GRTS. Let's remember, the opposition is a legal entity that operates within the gambits of the law. They did not come to overthrow the constitution. They could do what they could do, control what they could control. But we must join them, give them hope, give them courage, give them the support to continue this journey of liberating our people. Please, let's work hard. Let's come together. Let's fight for the total liberation of our country because the Gambia is at a crossroads. This is the deciding moment of the Gambia that we will have tomorrow. If Yahya Jami should succeed, can you imagine what he would do to people who are openly in the streets defying him, criticizing him? Do we want to give Yahya Jami the opportunity of open revenge against his enemies and perceived enemies? You've seen what he has done to Gambians for 22 years. And we must never allow that to be the case again. So thank you all so very much. And let's get to work again. What are you going to do? What are you willing to do to ensure that justice will prevail and the will of the Gambian people will be respected and protected? Thank you so very much. The struggle continues.